Currently, the rocket that was most recently scheduled to lift off last month is in United Launch Alliance's factory undergoing necessary upgrades. After an upper stage test article exploded, the company found a weakness in the upper stage tank and decided that Vulcan was not launching anywhere without fixing this problem. Once discovered, Vulcan went from completing practically all of its pre-launch testing and preparing to lift off in a month to being destacked and shipped away. Despite this significant hiccup, recent updates from ULA CEO Tori Bruno suggest that Vulcan will still lift off this year, a task that seems extremely unlikely given the circumstances and date. This being said, physical progress is coming along and with most of the pre-launch testing already complete, ULA could have an opportunity to fast track the process and get Vulcan in the air before 2024. This is assuming that all the upgrades work as intended and no other issues are revealed within the next few months. Here we'll go more in depth into Vulcan's upper stage reinforcement progress, what the company still needs to complete, the chances of a launch this year, and more. Earlier this year, photos and videos were released of a Centaur 5 upper stage exploding on the test stand. While the specific test article was separate from the flight article preparing to launch, it was the same design which brought up some concerns. Soon after, ULA began an investigation to figure out what went wrong. However, at the time, they didn't think it would affect the maiden flight of Vulcan, which was only months away. By then, Vulcan had completed tanking tests for both the first and upper stage, a wet dress rehearsal, and even a successful static fire of the two BE-4 engines. Unfortunately, the investigation eventually found that the leak originated in the forward dome of the tank, which is made of very thin stainless steel near a door at the top of the structure. A very detailed finite element model of that part of the tank revealed a stress riser, or intensification of loads, because of the complicated geometry around that part of the dome. More importantly, they realized that this weakness was not unique to the specific test article, but all the upper stage forward domes. ULA then de-stacked the practically flight-ready Vulcan and shipped the upper stage away for necessary upgrades. This occurred a few months ago in June. In the relatively short period of time between then and now, a lot has happened. Starting on July 27th, we got an update from Tori Bruno who said, The reinforced forward dome is built and getting ready to go on top of the rest of the tank. We then heard more earlier this month when he said, Inside of the new reinforced dome for Cert 1 during build. You can see the circular doubler in the center and the seam doublers running out radially along the gore welts. He also provided an image of this hardware with a view of the inside. Just over a week ago on the 10th, when asked about a launch date, he was quoted saying, Yes, we continue to be on track for a launch in quarter 4 of this year, with a second launch in early 2024. The reinforced CERT-1 Centaur-5 is making excellent progress in the factory, and its booster is ready to go to the Cape. This is quite a big deal, as not only did he confirm that a Vulcan should still launch this year, but the second Vulcan launch will be early next year. These are very ambitious dates from Tori, and depend on a few big decisions that have yet to be made. For example, ULA is still not sure whether or not they will complete another wet dress rehearsal once the reinforced upper stage returns and is stacked on the booster. It's likely that this decision will have quite the impact on schedule and whether or not a launch this year is possible. If the information provided wasn't enough, most recently on the 15th, Tori Bruno tweeted mentioning, just left the rocket factory, finishing up welding the reinforced Centaur 5 forward dome onto the rest of the completed CV tank, looking good for a launch this year. Based on all this info and the confidence of Bruno, a Vulcan launch could be possible this year, assuming everything goes perfectly between now and December. In other words, a single delay or slightly off test result would practically guarantee it gets pushed back to next year, and the second launch would only follow suit. With around four and a half months left until 2024, we can expect a lot of updates from ULA as they prepare to launch again for the first time. With so much focus on Vulcan's maiden flight, we hadn't heard much regarding Vulcan's second flight, which is set to launch Dream Chaser. Fortunately, Tori Bruno was always eager to share information and tweeted, Dan Cogren, who runs the rocket factory in Decatur, decided to pop next door to Huntsville and check on the BE-4 production ramp up at Blue Origin's brand new, very modern rocket engine factory. Lots of work in progress, and do I spy a Vulcan rocket CERT-2 engine in final assembly? This included a few images of the factory and engines in production. Earlier this year, Blue Origin began ramping up engine production with demand expected to soar thanks to Vulcan and New Glenn. Besides the engine explosion during a recent test, they've been creating more hardware and producing good results. With ULA hoping to launch Vulcan a second time in early 2024, these engines need to finish and ship to ULA relatively soon for integration. A process we saw not long ago for the first time on the CERT-1 Vulcan. Focusing back on the first mission, we will likely see some tanking tests again, but this time with the upgraded hardware. Back in March, the ULA team accomplished tanking demonstrations at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, Florida. The Pathfinder tests filled the Vulcan first stage and Centaur 5 upper stage with cryogenic propellant on separate days to validate performance of the stages, Vulcan launch platform, Space Launch Complex 41 facilities, and ground support systems. The tests, which also verified countdown steps, procedures, and timelines, were successfully performed March 10th on the Vulcan booster stage and March 16th on the Centaur 5. 
For all the testing, the preps and tanking team shift of launch console operators initiated the countdown to power up the rocket, perform testing, and complete final configuration for cryogenic propellant loading. During the planned countdown hold, the launch pad was verified clear of all personnel and the authorization was given to proceed into tanking of the rocket. The transfer lines at the pad and the flight hardware underwent chill-down procedures to thermally condition equipment against the harsh temperature shock of the propellants. Once that was achieved, the cryogenics began flowing into the rocket. The Vulcan booster uses liquefied natural gas, or LNG, in liquid oxygen. Centaur 5 is powered by liquid hydrogen in liquid oxygen. A shift change in the control room saw the detanking and securing team take over to drain the propellants back into the pad storage tanks, safe the rocket, and power it down. Engineers then reviewed the tanking test data collected and information gained in test objectives aimed at characterizing the performance of hardware and confirming predictions. This is a process we could end up seeing again depending on what ULA decides. In terms of design, Vulcan is meant to combine the best of today's Atlas V and Delta IV heavy rockets with the latest technology advancements to produce a single launch system that provides higher performance and greater affordability while continuing to deliver ULA's unmatched reliability and precision. They highlight that the single-core Vulcan can deliver payloads from low Earth orbit to Pluto and beyond while making access to space more cost-effective. They finish by pointing out that Vulcan also meets the challenging requirements now demanded by an expanding spectrum of missions that are essential to the nation's defense. Most importantly, the new rocket can be built in less than half the time as its predecessors and launched at a much higher tempo. More than 70 Vulcan launches are currently on the manifest, including 38 launches to deploy a majority of Amazon's Project Kuiper to provide fast, affordable broadband to communities around the world. Approximately 20 to 30 missions at the U.S. Space Force's number one offer in the National Security Space Launch Phase II procurement, and the orbital delivery of Sierra Nevada Corporation's Dream Chaser reusable space plane on cargo resupply missions to the International Space Station. The inaugural Vulcan mission will deliver two Kuiper prototype broadband satellites into low Earth orbit, send the astrobotic Peregrine commercial lunar lander to reach the moon, and carry a Celestis Memorial spaceflight payload into deep space. As for repairs, once the stage is fixed and ready, it will be loaded onto the rocket ship. Rocket ship is a highly maneuverable, unique custom-built rocket transport ship with the versatility to navigate the shallow and deep waters along the route. This 312-foot or 95-meter long roll-on slash roll-off vessel has complete living quarters and dining area for its crew of 16 a below-deck machine shop, and navigational aids on the bridge. All of which helping support Vulcan's first mission, and many more to come. ULA has had some trouble getting the first Vulcan off the ground, but is continuing to push forward. By now, the upgrades are practically done, and teams at ULA are finishing installation before shipment of the stage back to the launch site. We will have to wait and see how it progresses, and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.